Let's start with taking a look at the assessment tool and the different options. So we're just going to do a quick overview and then we'll go more into detail. To create a new assessment, you're going to go to Add Materials and then you're going to choose Add Assessment. You'll be asked to name the assessment, which can be changed later. There is a due date option. You have your points option. The submission right now is on disabled. That means kids cannot submit an assessment. So I usually turn that on um, just so that when I save it, it's ready to go and I don't have a problem with people accessing the assessment. But you do have the option uh, whether to disable it or make it available during specific times. You can give it a password. I keep that disabled. And you can choose category. It's an assessment, so I'm going to choose test. And that is required. It should default to the six week period and the factor, you don't need to worry about that. If you're wanting to individually assign, you have those options just like normal. So I'm gonna click create. And it defaults you into the setup. And this is really cool because you have lots of different options here. You can add instructions if you need it. You have your assessment settings, so you can have a time limit. Um, you can ask questions in a random order, which is really helpful. Show possible points. All of those options, just click on the buttons that you want to change. Um, students and under assessment toolbar, you have some different questions. Students can flag questions, eliminate answer choices, calculator, so on. And you can read through those different options that you have. And you'll see you have more options than you might have in other online testing formats. And then you have your student settings. This is important. Allow students to view results. If you don't want them to see their results, you can choose no. You can choose yes, they can see the results. And then, I'll co and then you can add yes with correct answers. So if this is an assessment you don't want them sharing with other students, you'll want to keep that at no. And if you want them to get a certain grade, you can allow them to take the test multiple times. Make those changes, and then you can move on to your questions. On the left is where you're going to choose your questions when you click on one of these choices, which we'll get into more detail in this course. Then you can add your question and it will appear over here. If you create a question, you can add in different options. For example, if I do fill in the blank, I can type in my question type and you'll notice you have some more options up here at the top that you can uh, add on there, whether it's how your text looks, the size of your text, if you want bullet points, justification, website links, if you want to upload an image, if you want to add math, tables, and so on. So all of that information is there. And then as you scroll down, you'll fill it out. And again, we'll get into these details later. You also have your grading option. So this is going to show you how your students did, how many attempts, you know, just information about it. If you have questions that are open-ended and you need to grade them, that's where you'll go is into the assessment and to grade the, the, the questions that were left blank or could not be self-graded. And then reporting is where you're going to get your reporting information on your students. There's no data in mine yet, but that's where you'll go as your students take assessments and that information will show up under reporting. So that is the overview of how it, this works in the class. Let's go ahead and dive into this class and learn more about it.